have a quiet little motel when in fact it has now become known as the scene of the crime. And you have a vacancy? Oh, we have 12 vacancies. You know if it's the first place that looks like it's hiding from the world? I think that we're all in our private traps, clamped in them. And none of us can ever get out. Is anyone at home? Oh, that, uh, that must be my mother. Is anything wrong? Am I acting as if there's something wrong? She's not missing so much as she's run away. Put me down. Mother, oh God, mother! What are you running away from? She looked like a wrong one to you. It's not as if she were a, a maniac. She just goes a little mad sometimes. Why, she wouldn't even harm a fly. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day 12 of 31 Days of Monsters. I am your horrible host, Graham Nolan, and today we're talking about the 1962 Alfred Hitchcock classic, Psycho, written by Robert Block. Now, it's been a while since we've had a Star Trek connection, but uh, today we have, because Robert Block has written three uh, original series Star Trek episodes, uh, Cat's Paw, uh, What Are Little Girls Made Of, and... Um, what was the other one? Wolf in the Fold. Uh, those three uh, were awesome because he's a great writer. Uh, this movie opens up. Well, first off, let's let's talk a little bit about um, how it got done. Uh, this was a this was black and white, of course, and which is not unusual for 1962. But you know, Alfred Hitchcock was coming off of doing big budget. Technicolor films like North by Northwest and Vertigo and um, To Catch a Thief, um, The Man Who Knew Too Much. And he was getting tired of that. And so he wanted to um, kind of get down and dirty and, and, and film it television style. Uh, he had a couple uh, 1950s uh, black and white TV shows that were quite successful. And he brought over some of that film crew uh, to film this. Uh, the budget was low. So it helped that it was in black and white as well. And he felt that uh, having the, the blood that was necessary in this film would have been too much in color. Um, but all that to say that the um, studio did not have a lot of faith in, in this movie. And uh, rather than the $250,000, uh, which is what his, his usual fee was for, for directing a film at this time, he forsake that and uh, um, uh, took a piece of the back end. And they said, okay, hey, great. You know, they didn't think it was going to make any money anyway. Well, here we are uh, 64 years later uh, almost, and we're still talking about it. He, Hiscock made a ton of money uh, with that decision. It's interesting. The film opens up with uh, Marion Crane. Um, uh, getting dressed and she has like a, a white bra and slip on and she puts on a, a light outfit and, and a white purse. And um, later on, um, after she has stolen the money, she wears uh, a darker outfit and a darker bra. I think, I, I'm not sure if they show her changing with the bra or not, but certainly a darker outfit and a black purse and black gloves. Um and that was definitely um, a conscious decision by Hitchcock to to first show her purity, uh, and then she makes a bad decision, uh, and she goes over to the dark side, if you will. And it also foreshadows what's to come you know, in the film later on and, and her eventual fate. I thought that was brilliant. Um, Hitchcock was great at doing that stuff. 
uh, in the seat in the um, the trailer there you saw at the very end it, it's sort of the last shot of the movie where you know uh, we hear the mother's voice you know saying in Norman's head saying you know he wouldn't even harm a fly and then they do like a superimposition on his face of like a skull that you could just barely make out and it's chilling it's it's chilling uh, actually it's not the last scene because I think that, and then they cut to um, them pulling the car arbor gas car out of the uh, the swamp area but um, uh, Anthony Perkins and uh, Janet Lee uh, years later you know confessed that yeah they were sort of typecast after this film or certainly were um, remembered more for this than anything else that they've done even though they had uh, you know very successful careers uh, and they both agreed that uh, it yeah, they are happy with that, you know, that, that, that they're remembered for one thing, you know, uh, if, if, they, if, if they're remembered as opposed to being forgotten, um, that's a good thing, uh, particularly anybody in any, any kind of the arts, if you have something that you're remembered for, um, it, it sure beats obscurity. Uh, so they were certainly, um, proud of their association with this, um, um, this film. The Bernard Herrmann uh, um, musical score is amazing. Uh, it's all string instruments. And he almost, I would dare say, that he uh, rewrote the language of horror film music. Um, when you're talking to somebody and, you know, you, you're making your own sound effects, if you will, like of stabbing somebody, it's like, wee, 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 wee. Well, that came from Psycho. Uh, they used it extensively. I mean, lifted it right out of uh, the soundtrack uh, in Brian De Palma's uh, Carrie, which we just discussed. Uh, so, I mean, uh, Bernard Herrmann, uh, I believe he also wrote the soundtrack for uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still. Uh, and he sort of rewrote the the language of science fiction musics with that, you know, the, the um, theremin use. That you know that kind of stuff uh which is what you know again that's the sound effect you make when you're trying to go sci-fi you know <laughs> so amazing composer amazing composer uh what else what else what else uh i love the sequence where arborgast is going up the stairs and he gets to the top of the stairs and it's a, it's a bird's eye shot. And the reason it was done that way, because we, we had seen him coming up the stairs, see his feet. Uh, and then we see the door ajar. There's a light coming out of it and the door comes ajar. So we know somebody's in there. And the only way to show that sequence, which is his killing, his stabbing on the steps, um, was to do it as a bird's eye shot. So we're not giving away the fact that it's, it's, it's Norman dressed up as his mother. Uh, and it works so effectively and it's shocking too, you know, um, to think that this character gets uh, killed in that way. Uh, he does a great job of painting the, the mother as this psychopath when we all know how it ends up. One thing I couldn't understand is, uh, you know, when the arm comes down, you know, and you see the, the knife cut across his face and he's shocked by it. They did this weird thing where he's going down the steps and he's kind of like going down backwards. Um, and the lens is going back. So it looks like, you know, the distance is getting further and further as he's going down. Uh, he never actually like, it's almost like he, he walks almost all the way down the steps before, before he falls on the ground. Uh, and then you see uh, Mrs. Bates jump on him and then start, uh, start stabbing him. Uh, I suppose that was for the drama of it rather than just having him going back down and tumbling and tumbling, uh, possibly breaking his neck. Um, it's just, you know, every once in a while, Hitchcock makes choices where I'm like, what? What was that? What, what was the thinking behind that? Another example is in, in one of my all-time favorite movies, Rear Window. The helicopter shows up um, flying over them like it's trying to peer in someplace and it's clearly a, a, a what do they call it a, not, it's not quite i guess it's a matte shot um 
so it's it's very very odd and it jumps out at you and i'm like what is that supposed to be i mean are they supposed to be peering in at the newlyweds you know it it's it's just one of those weird things that that uh that he does that where uh, i i kind of like scratch my head over but uh this is uh an amazing amazing uh movie um another first about it was that uh it's the first time you ever see a toilet flush on film uh Hitchcock knew that they couldn't show that, but it was important to the story, you know, obviously show it in the way it's supposed to be used. Um, and he had, they had, he had his screenwriter write a scene where she flushes down the toilet some paper. Uh, I can't remember if it was a note she tore up or, or I think it was a note she tore up or a letter she tore up and she flushes it down the toilet. So you actually get to see the water swirling and stuff. Um, and it was an important part uh that was going to be uh later on that they couldn't cut um so it's hard to think of but you know <laughs> you never see a toilet in a bathroom in any of these old movies and certainly you never see it in use uh so the theory is or the thought is that uh this is the first time it was ever shown actually flushing and being used so one other first there uh so that wraps us up for day 12 psycho amazing movie one of the classics if you haven't seen it well you didn't do your homework yet so your homework for tomorrow uh day 13 is one i think you're really gonna enjoy it's a modern film came out last year i think maybe two years ago at most train to busan it's a zombie film uh, we have quite a few zombie films this year uh not my favorite genre but uh the ones i'm choosing are actually uh, really interesting uh, and this one is one of the best modern ones ever. Uh, it has a lot of heart. It's a Korean film. And so we'll talk about that one tomorrow. So uh, until then, my friends, I hope you have a great rest of your day. And uh, we will see you tomorrow morning. Have a good one. Bye-bye.